this book is the story of Derek Black, who was the future heir to the white nationalist movement in the United States, and then went to college for the first time in his life, left this insular white supremacist world, and began to meet and spend time with people who had been the victims of his prejudices. And, and over the next two years on this campus, these other students, through their own activism, were able to find a way to have Derek begin to see a totally different perspective and a different point of view bringing him to the point that now he disavowed this ideology and has devoted his life to fighting back against it, even when that means fighting back against his family. I think right now in the country there's, there's this big debate between what do we do when we're confronted with the worst kinds of hate speech, with, with really awful racist ideas? Is, is it best to resist um, some sort of form of protest resistance, uh, Antifa-style activism? Or is it best to try to have a conversation with the hope that maybe you can change somebody's mind? And, and I think that we make a mistake when we think of those two things as oppositional. The truth is, in the story of Derek Black, both of those tactics were absolutely necessary. When students on this campus first learned who Derek was, the, the first response was to ostracize him. Um, students of color, arranged a protest to shut down the entire campus of this school to say, this kind of ideology is not okay here. Um, and because of that, Derek was made to feel vulnerable for one of the first times in his life. And he saw through the eyes of a peer community how hateful his ideas were. It also meant that when some students on campus took the opposite approach and decided to start inviting Derek over and trying to have conversations with him, Derek was in this vulnerable position so he was much more likely to say yes. This book is also the story of a remarkable transformation. And I hope that for readers, as it did for me, the book is a reminder that um, personal transformation, our capacity for that is astounding. If the future heir to the white supremacist movement in the United States um, can somehow emerge on the other end as you know, one of the most prominent young anti-racist activists in the world, um, and if in doing so, he was willing to lose his family, lose his uh, every community connection from the first part of his life, if he is capable of making that transformation, if people are capable of convincing him that uh, racism and white supremacy is a huge flaw and a huge risk to the future of the United States, that gives me a lot of hope that the rest of us can begin to do the work of convincing other people who don't have quite as far to go on that spectrum to confront the white supremacy that's so much at the heart of what the country is.